All right, welcome back to a new episode on the Crossbar Channel. Well, today's episode, we're talking the Premier League title, League 1, and the big clash in the Champions League won on Wednesday, Bayern Munich and PSG. So, yeah, we're not wasting any more time. Let's just get into it. So, we had Manchester City and Newcastle early today, early morning. Um, I'm sure Arsenal fan was really ho hoping that you know um, Newcastle can pull off something, at least get a point out of City. Um, it kind of looked that way a little bit, but then the game really kind of got out of hand. Um, City scored and then Bernardo Silva came in and scored. So, yeah, City won 2-0. And then Arsenal suffered. It went down to the wire. Arsenal was, you know, down 2-0. He passed the 70th minute, and then Arsenal ended up winning 3-2. I think it's something to say about this Arsenal team. You know, those are the type of thing, when you look back at the end of the season, these are the type of wins that makes a champion. You know, the road is not supposed to be flawless and easy, but this type of game, when you're down 2-0 at home, you know, your rivals already win early in the morning, the pressure is on you to keep the status quo, and you only have you know, 20 minutes left, or well, 27 plus the added time, and you find a way to score three goals and get a 3-2 win. Those are the type of victory that makes a, a squad really believe, hey, we kind of we can do this. Not that we're untouchable, but hey, this is happening. We're making this happen. Because it's easy to just drop the ball and be like, yeah, it was just too much, the pressure, and this and this and that. But Arsenal responded big time. This was a big win. I know it was only against Bournemouth, but it, it became a big win because it was down 2-0 down the wire. But coming into the game, it pretty much everyone, everyone had a cons we had a consensus saying that Arsenal was going to win. But just, you know, what happened in the actual game that makes it even a stronger case for, you know, um, the title race. But here's the thing, Arsenal losing this the forward. Um, Trossa, Leandro Trossa got injured today. Nketi has injured, Gabriel Jesus, of course, is injured. And you can tell during the during the game, Arsenal had the possession. They were really, like, dominating, uh, playing around. If it, it had that boring, if I can say. It, has that bo it had that boring Barcelona. It had that boring Pep Guardiola, really. That's what I want to say. It had that boring Pep Guardiola tap. You know, passing the ball around, around the, the six-yard box, and nothing coming in as far as, like, um, a ball crosses in in the six yard because they were kind of they're missing a striker and that's uh that's why city was also you know the year they didn't have aguero or they had no strikers you know possession was great it was fluid but you kind of had a feeling like, i didn't even going to be able to do it and then they can see the second goal i saw at some point i was like i didn't think they were going to pull it off but yeah and they did it but as much as it's a great result how are they going to cope now with no striker no really striker in the team, you know. Jesus is gone, like I say. Um, Trossa got injured today, and Katia is injured also. Who's going to step in? They got a win today, but they're not going to face Bournemouth every week. They're going to have to figure out something. But yeah, I guess tomorrow's another day. They live, they live to fight today, and they fought, and they got the, the win. Uh, yeah, City still at five points from, from Arsenal. So Arsenal kind of maintained them at elbow link, as I call it. Um... But yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough, especially with the injuries. When cities, city can afford certain injuries. They have a whole. They pretty much have two and a half squad uh, for Manchester City to go along the game. But uh, Arsenal squad is super tight. Uh, but we see, we see how they handle. And that's also what makes a you know a better story. See if they can go through it through the end with this lead. But yeah, but we see. That's how you grow as a team and as a group of player. Um, again, two 0 Man City defeated. Uh, Newcastle, Newcastle played really well, really well. I don't know if they're still gonna make top four. They've been dropping point left and right, like Newcastle. Uh, and I think the hype, not none of the hype is going down, but they're certainly going downward as far as like the, the league table. So I don't know. They got to find something. They got to find it inward. There's no market transfer gonna save them at this time of the year. So they got to figure it out. Personally, I would say. To start Alexander Isaac, I think he should start. He has the pace 
a little bit more unpredictable. Um, I think it should start. I understand the experience that Wilson, Callum Wilson brings in, but either either he should start um, the game or should come in sooner. Um, Alexander Isaac shouldn't be starting, you know, thirty minutes before the game or stuff like that before the end of the game. Uh, I think he should. I should. He should have a start. Also, Alan Maximin. Saint Alan Maximin should start. If Saint Maximin start that game, that's probably a different game. I know it's not really known to be too consistent, but if he starts that game, he's a showman. Uh, Saint Maximin is a showman, and a game against City is the type of game that he likes to shine on. So yeah, if I were the coach, I get Saint Maximin, get Gordon on the bench, and then start with Alexander Isaac and push. You know, trying to get a win, trying to get a win. Uh, but yeah. That's it. Manchester United play tomorrow with uh, Liverpool in Anfield. That's a that's a good one, big one for the title race, as far as United is concerned. Because Liverpool is not fighting for the title; they're fighting right now for European spots. So it's gonna be a good game. Liverpool is, is Liverpool kind of meshing now? Um, you know, is are the good days ahead now for Liverpool? We get the answer. The question gonna be answered tomorrow. So we have an early early game also. You know, tomorrow. And United coming in with a hundred percent confidence. You know they've been, they've pretty much been the second hardest team with Arsenal in England. So they're coming in. I know they're third on the table, but they, I think they're the second hard, hardest team with uh, Arsenal. So United is coming in as a favorite. I'm gonna say so. Uh, it's been a while since they come into Anfield as a favorite. I think they are just because of their form. But I also think Liverpool is starting to mesh now. That's a dangerous Liverpool now. We're going to see a glimpse of it first half against Real Madrid. We saw a little glimpse of it also last week. So, But United is on fire. So that's called for a good game. Liverpool, Man United tomorrow for the title race. Arsenal still first, City second, um, five points apart. And then United, they still have two games. So two more games and another game in hand. So United can easily be three points from City when it's all said and done. So they need to manage this game better and hopefully we'll see tomorrow i can't wait i'm excited about it um chelsea also won honorable mention i mean we can't just bash on them when they lose and not say anything when they win but i'm gonna make a video when all the games are played you know our weekly um european top five review so this is not a subject today i want to touch on the two the first and the second so arsenal and city and then man united and then in france Paris Saint-Germain defeated um, FC Nantes 4-2. Um, rest in peace, Juste Fontaine. There was a huge homage uh, at, the, at the beginning of the game. Um, you know, it's always nice to be recognized, you know, recognize the, the work that the guy, the people that paved the way, really. And on that night that he was honored, Kylian Mbappe break the record of Paris Saint-Germain all-time uh, top score, goal scorer. So that's good. Um, you can tell Mbappe won in it. He was adamant he won in it. He had to shoot for it. Um, I think it was Nike. Nike. Nike gave him the shoot already prior to the game. Everybody was kind of like ready for him to break that uh, Edison Cavani and everybody else's record. And now he's the top scorer ever for, for Paris Saint Germain. Now Paris was leading 2 0, and then they got, you know, and then FNM came back 2 2, and then it feels like it's going to be one of those games, you know, especially injuries. We, uh, I think Marquinhos is going to be a big question mark. PSG is piling injury. Uh, I don't know how they do how they doing it this season, but they doing it through injuries. A lot of bodies out now, uh, but then they rallied back and scored two more goals, and they won four two. So Paris is clear on the league table as of now, sixty three point eleven point of Marseille. Marseille hasn't played yet. Marseille is gonna play tomorrow against Stade Rennes. Uh, Marseille has to win to keep Paris to keep close to Paris. To keep the suspense going and to keep really believing after the dissolution in the Coupe de France against Annecy. This is the only thing they're chasing this season. So, Marseille and is going to be a good game. we we'll see whatever happens, that happens. Um, I hope for the Olympians that they win. But really, I could care less if they win, really. <laughs> I could care less about Olympic Marseille. Um, yeah, that lead, this segue lead me to the Champions League coming back Tuesday and Wednesday. Everybody know the big game, Bayern Munich and Paris Saint-Germain. Who is going to go through? Bayern Munich won 1-0 in the Parc des Princes. Can Paris go to the Allianz Arena and get a W? Um, for most experts, and from my point of view, I think if I only look at the first half of the game 
Okay, let me say, if I look at the, the game pre-Mbappe, I'm going to say a definite no. But the game post-Mbappe's entrance, Paris can win. If they play the way they play, but here's the problem. Can they do that for 90 minutes? And they have so much, so many players injured. I mean, you already learned today, Neymar is definitely out. I uh, know we speculated about it in the previous videos, but it's official. Neymar is not going to play that game. Marquinhos got injured today. He's hip, so likely he's not going to play. Hakimi is injured. Nuno Mendes is coming back. He came back. He played today. He came back today. When I think Bayern Munich is getting back his, their squad, I know Leo Sané is listed questionable. Other than that, Sadio Mane is back in the lineup, and pretty much everybody is there. So, can Paris do it with a diminished team? It remains to be seen. I don't think so. I would have loved Paris, the both teams being full strength, to really have the game and evaluate who's, who's actually the best between the two teams. But Paris is coming very diminished. Uh, Hakimi, who is, to me, the best right back in the world, is not going to be there. Neymar is not going to be there. Hakimi is not going to be there. Also, Mukele got injured today, so Hakimi's replacement is not going to be there. You know, they had to play the teen, the, the, the youngster, uh, Pembele, on the, on the right. Um, this does, doesn't look good. Kipembe is also out. So Kipembe is out. Marquinhos is out. Hakimi is out. Mukele is out. Who else? Neymar is out. So those are five starters, five potential starters out. So, but this is the big boy league, so no excuses. But uh, it would have been it would have been nice to have both, both team at full strength. But it's football, and uh, Paris does have Lionel Messi and Kylian Mbappe. So, but yeah, but we see on Wednesday the game. Um, other than that, that's it. Again, tomorrow we got a bunch of games, and then after all the games are played. We're going to do a weekly review of top five leagues review. And then we're going to touch also, I'm going to make a segue on Kevin De Bruyne and Mudric from Chelsea. And I want to just dissect, I want to pre prep that video for tomorrow. You know, is Kevin De Bruyne on a decline? Is it is it done? Is Kevin De Bruyne cook? Because it's been, I've been seeing things from Guardiola that seems to say that Guardiola probably doesn't trust him as he used to. You know, getting him out of the super important games like he did. He done that before. I noticed that before, and I thought maybe wait, was the Bruyne sick or was it a fluke game? He did it again today. You know, taking him out for Bernardo Silva. Now nah, Bernardo Silva came in and scored a second goal, but that's that's the, that's besides the point. Guardiola never take the Bruyne out an important game when he still needed. So he's been doing it. I've seen it a few times. So it got me thinking. Wait, is the Bruyne? Is Guardiola telling us? Is, is this the Bruyne last season as a full round starter? Is it going to be this, a super starter again next season? Or is he going to have to share, you know, the spot like everybody else now in Guardiola's system? And also I want to talk about Modric in a different video. Is Modric overrated? Was he overhyped? Is he living up to his expectation? Is he living up to the hype? And uh, especially not just him, but all the trans Chelsea general transfer. So yeah, um, this is not the topic of today. I just, I will get that video rolling uh, sometime in the next couple of days. We, we got, we're got we going to have that discussion. And I'm going to submit that to you guys and I want to hear you guys in the comment. But yeah, that's it for today. Tomorrow we're doing the top five review and the two topics that I want to bring as a segue. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking up with me. You guys, let me know in the comment below who you think is going to win the race in England, who you got between PSG and Bayern Munich, and I will see you guys on the next one.